hopefully that's still going. Okay, cool. All right, welcome to my TED Talk. Thank you for coming to the event. I can't hear you. Uh, hopefully we're good and you can hear me. Oh, I forget this, the, the Steam thing. Yeah, okay. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> cute, cute. I got it, right? We're good? Okay, cool. All right, um, so thank you for coming to my event. I appreciate that. Uh, we're trying. This is this has been my like special interest for like uh, half a year now, and I just like wanted to do something with it. So this is this is us doing something with it. Um, I didn't. I made I made the world. I tried to implement the shader. Um, Hi, connected with the shader. Thank you, Hi. Um, but otherwise, the VJs have done like so much work to like make this happen. So like, round of applause for the VJs. Thank you, thank you, Silent. Thank you, Scenic. Thank you, Gpot. Thank you, Juno. <laughs> thank you, Ten. <laughs> like, thank that. Honest, honestly, like, I really, I really appreciate um, all the work that everyone, um, everyone put into this. So, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, VJs. Um, appreciate you. Um, so, um, what we're going to be doing here is just a really quick. I'm just going to like slam through like a, a few of the aspects of VR stuff, um, like of 3D stuff in VR, um, just so that you can kind of like get the, like the keywords, okay? This isn't gonna be like a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is just gonna be like, hey, I wanna do blank. Uh, this, these are the words you need to know. I will try to like put this online somehow uh, in a way that is cool, okay? Cool, all right, beautiful. So we're gonna learn uh, how to use 3D in VR chat. Uh, we're gonna use how to display it, on 3D content and how to make 3D content. That one's gonna be like super duper quick, okay? That's a, a very in-depth kind of thing. Um, but the basic thing that we need to know, you know, when we're, when we're seeing, like seeing in stereo, we already see in stereo, right? We, we do that, we do that every single day. We have two eyeballs. Most of us have two eyeballs, pardon me. Um, but like, if you just feed like a left and a right view into those eyeballs, you can get a stereoscopic effect, right? You can you can kind of trick them in that way. It's very easy to trick the human eye. Um, so all we have to do is feed in a left and a right, right? So producing that is kind of hard, right? Um, producing the left and the right is more difficult, um, but seeing in it is easy because we're wearing we're wearing VR. We have two eyeballs. We're wearing two screens on our face. So this is just capturing, showing one thing to one eye and one thing to the other eye. Um, so streaming, the way we've been streaming tonight uh, over OBS is um, we're, we're just, we're, we're literally putting in left and right. And then this shader is separating that left and right. So, so technically these 1080p images that you've been looking at tonight are actually half rev resolution, right? So it's actually, it's not 1920 by 1080. You've been looking at 960 by 1080, right? So, so half of, half of that. That horizontal space is what we've been looking at. Um, so watching a video in 3D. Um, so Hi has their offline world um, that has like a lot of options um, for watching 3D. So if you're streaming, if you're putting in like links, um, it's going to be providing that. It's going to be it's going to be showing you a good image in Hi's offline so that you can watch 3D video. All of the panel for that is like over in the kitchen. <laughs> If that makes sense, you just have to go to the kitchen. Um, and there, I have seen a lot of movie worlds that do it. Um, it's it's kind of like hit or hit or hit or miss in that way. But I've I've heard I've heard positive reviews of movie worlds in which people have had 3D experiences in them. But if you're piping it in, you can kind of control the bit rate in a, in, a, in a better way. So you might get a better effect if you're trying to watch movies in 3D. Okay, so. When we're talking about making your own world and bringing 3D video into that world, right? It doesn't matter what what like video player you're using. I know there's a lot of different like video players, but ultimately in the back end is they're all using either AV Pro or Unity Video Player. Okay, those are like the two video play everything is just piping into the same the same stuff right and av pro is like like a paid unity software like it's like 200 bucks or something but they've made a version for vr chat that 
is built within VRChat, right? So AV Pro is the live streaming service that we've been using today, the live streaming um, program rather within, within Unity. Um, so those are at the core of things. It doesn't matter if you're using um, like U Sharp video player, at the core, you're actually using AV Pro and Unity video player. Okay, cool. Okay, so adding stereo 3D to worlds, you've seen the pictures out here. We have the paintings that everyone submitted. Make sure you look at the nameplates. A lot of really talented people put together paintings and pictures for us in this 3D world. It's been lovely. Um, so if you're using that, uh, so TCL, 987, right, is the one who built the shader, the 3D shader. Uh, it's on GitHub. It is readily available. Like you can just you can just bring it into your Unity your Unity project, and it's going to work out of the box. If you want to put pictures on it, if you want to stream video with the Unity video player, which is like YouTube videos, saved videos, like MP4s, anything like that, it's going to work perfectly fine out of the box, right? So TCL's shader, 3D shader, you're feeding it in. Like we see here, we have like a left and right image, right? Just like you would have with a like a side-by-side -side movie. And we're feeding it into TCL shader and it's gonna divide it by the eye, right? So that that's what we've been looking at tonight. We've been looking at these left and right images, right? But you're only seeing the left one with your left eye and the right one with your right eye. Um, specifically for for photos, for making still images in VRChat uh, worlds, I would recommend kind of like blowing it out to be a square um, because Unity has that thing where it doesn't really like to have odd shapes of things. It likes to have squares and like half squares. Um, so I, I would almost recommend like making it a square yourself. Um, so that's... That's that. That's how you add three D to to a world. You just you just have you just have a a sixteen by nine kind of shaped thing. You can put a sixteen by nine image in there, and it's just going to work. Really fun to play around with. So that's the core of it. But if you want to do live video, right? Um, this this part I don't understand very well. I'm going to kind of give you the keywords. I kind of like bumbled around this to to make it work. But if you're doing live video, and you just use TCL shader out of the box. It's just it's going to be a little darker, right? So if you figure out how to set up TCL's uh, shader with live video with the AV Pro, AV Pro is the live one, okay? So if you figure out how to how to put that together, it's it's going to be kind of dark, right? It's it's the, the, the it's going to be darker, and then you're you're you know I, 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 actually for for live video it's brighter. I I got that wrong. I apologize. So it's actually brighter when you bring in live video. So you have to kind of like drop the brightness when you're streaming it, and then that makes the quality worse. Um, so to fix that, you have to change it from gamma to linear. That's kind of just like the thing that fixes live video. So that's what we've been using today is a, a, a modified version of TCL's shader that's using this gamma to linear. That's the only thing that's changed within the shader. Um, that's just... You, you're going to have to learn about shader stuff, <laughs> unfortunately, but you can modify this. This is a, a, a shader like node tool um, that's a paid, a paid asset within, within Unity. Okay, we're going to keep this high level. We're going to keep moving. Um, but that's, those, are, those are kind of the things you need to know for, for AV Pro, for live video. Okay, so we're going to slam through this. Creating things for 3D is hard. Okay, um, it's 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 difficult. You know, making a two D image is one thing, but you can't just like expect the game to create depth for it, right? You have to like you have to give it information. So we're just going to look at a few ways that you can make three D images and video for VR chat, right? So these are the two different ways that we have of setting up cameras because when we have when we have a 3D environment that we're like looking into and we want to produce a stereoscopic view of, we have to use two cameras, right? One for each eye. So the way that uh, certain way, certain um, certain programs, cer certain processes use 
is that they put the cameras parallel to each other. And that kind of lets your eyes pick where they want to focus. Um, the area where the, um, the two cameras overlap is called convergence. Right, so it's it's kind of it's kind of like a focus. If you know you know if you know photography, it's kind of like a it's like it's like a plane where these two cameras are like meeting, right? So that's called convergence, and that's 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 very easy to look at. So if you make if you make a three D image that converges, it's 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 easier to look at, but with the parallel way of doing three D images. It kind of lets your lets your eyes pick where they, where they want to focus, but it's a little bit it's a little bit harder to look at. Okay, so this is kind of like the um, the effect that we want to have, right? We we want to have two distinct we want to have two distinct um, images, one for the left eye, one for the right eye, right? And that's that that's our goal. So you kind of have to work backwards from there, right? Okay, perfect. So this is um, this is VRC lens. This is what VRC lens puts together. Um, if you've never used VRC lens before, uh, Hirobiki produces VRC lens. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, so the effect that we have here is parallel, right? So like we were saying before, this is doing a parallel effect. Um, so that it's it's a little tougher to look at sometimes. You can kind of see here, right? You can kind of see. You know, these are two very different images. If I was seeing this in 3D, I'd have to kind of force them together with my with my brain, right? So it's a little difficult. There are um, you can you can go into Photoshop. You can kind of put those together. Um, that's what I did with the with these images for the um, for the poster that was out front. I kind of put them together so they're a little easier to work at work with. Oh. One more thing about VRC lens, though, um, you got to be careful with VRC lens. Uh, yeah, with VRC lens, don't use the yellow mode. There's like a yellow mode on VRC lens, and it makes it, you think that it's doing convergence, but it's just swapping eyes. It's it, it's like a cross-eyed effect. So don't use the um, don't use the the yellow mode on on, on on 3D. Just use the white 3D mode. Sorry for the, the the camera noises, by the way. I just realized that that would be going through. Um, or maybe not. Maybe not because it's a microphone. Okay, cool. We're cool. We're cool. Okay. Yes. So this is, this is what an image looks like with convergence, right? So this is what I've done with the poster up front. Is, that, is I've manually kind of converged it together. So now you can see, you know, there's parts of this image that look flat, right? That look like they don't have any any depth to them, right? They're just, they're, they're unbothered by both eyes. The both eyes can see that image really cleanly. And then there's sort of the edge parts, right? The outer edge parts that are different from each other. So that's, I feel like that's, it, it's less of a um, it's less of an in your face effect, but it's it's easier to look at for sure. So when we're making three D images, it's important to be pixel perfect. Okay, so we got exactly half the screen is taken up by both. There can't be any overlap in the middle. It's like really important that there's no overlap whatsoever. Um, Double, never mirrored. So you can see here with these with these examples, right? You can see how these aren't, they're not mirrored across. And you, you really have to think about that. Honestly, there's a lot of, there's a lot of times where you're going to be like modifying things um, in like Photoshop and stuff where you're like, you, the way you think about it is mirrored, but it's really important that like those two images are just two different of the same thing moved across. <laughs> so I don't know. That's just really important to keep in mind. And the way the way that your eyes focusing works if there's anything like if you're looking at something in the background and there's something in the way up front that's just really hard to look at that's a, that, that's a that's a hard effect so when you're choosing your imagery it's important to avoid that okay so again with vrc lens it's using this parallel effect right um wide angle is way better with VRC lens, because if you even you you can like you can picture it here, right? You can you can you can picture, you know these these two are going to be the same amount apart. The 
the just like with your VR headset, every every sort of 3D effect has an IPD, right? It has how far apart the two cameras are from each other. So if you kind of thin out this thing, there's going to be less convergence. There's going to be less, right? So you really want to keep things wide angle. Um, I find like 20 millimeters, 25 millimeters is good um, with VRC lens, and that that makes it an easier to look at an image for sure. And you can do you can do video with VRC lens too, of course. So um, 3D video, you know, you want to be really gentle with it. Make sure you stabilize that. All right. So doing 3D for Blender. Okay. So this is the. I feel like this is the really exciting part. Um, a lot of the a lot of the submissions out there like completely knocked out of the park. Really big fan of some of the work we've seen outside. Um, so working with Blender. If you do Blender renders already, these these options are like so simple. Honestly, you just you, all you have to do is like in the output properties, you you like check off stereoscopy, and then it gives you some tools to deal with the with the convergence plane that we talked about before, and the IPD. So you can change those two things to make a like a more dramatic or a less dramatic image, and then when you're outputting, it actually shows you this like this sort of so again we have this middle part here by the eyes that is both eyes are seeing it the same but then you can see out here we've got like left and right are seeing things very differently right so it's a it's it's, it's, it's a very different effect from that so there's there's a lot of tools to play around with blender blender renders are gorgeous and i find these are especially easy to look at because you can really um, get get everything perfect uh, so creating with Touch Designer. Touch Designer is a VJ program. Um, Shaggy was using Touch Designer tonight. Uh, his shit really popped off. I really, I really, that was awesome. Shout out Shaggy. Shout out Shaggy for sure. Um, so in Touch Designer, there already exists guides for putting this stuff together. There's example. This this website here um, has an example TOE. That you can use so you can literally just like drag this aspect of the toe into your shit and you can be looking because you're already using like cameras in touch designer right so really you're just making a second camera that's like the whole the whole aspect of all of this stuff is that you're you're adding a second offset camera so that we can see things in 3d all right so silent used notch for her visuals tonight Shout out Silent. Um, and she sent me these screenshots of what she was working with. Basically, there just is a node within Notch that uses um, stereo, stereo vision. So again, it's just producing, instead of having one camera in a 3D space, you're offsetting a second camera, right? Cool. Okay, uh, did I skip one? Okay. This is this is kind of this is kind of a tricky one. So ten ten was working with this tonight. So you can actually like layer images on top of each other in creative ways, right? So if you, if if you if you only have access to two D software, if you don't have the time to prepare and like um, render, if you don't have the space the, the space even to render within three D, you know, if you're used to two D stuff, um, you can put those on top of each other. This is a very delicate process. It's really, this is where you can fall into a lot of traps with trying to mirror things instead of having them be offset from each other. Um, so basically I find um, that, so you're basically just nudging, right? You have like an image on top of another image, right? These are on, these are on top of each other. These are layers with each other, right? And so what you want to do is you just, you nudge one of them into the center. I find it's much better to go into the center than away from the center, right? But you have to nudge both images into the center and then you have to make sure you fix up the crop on the other side. And fixing up that crop is easier than it sounds, right? You have to be really careful that these are still the same offset image, right? So you can see, you can see like specifically, see how this little cloud here <laughs> is there? And it's not over. It's not over there, right? It's not. These aren't. These aren't mirrors of each other, right? And so then you have to do something. You have to do like a, like a multiply, like a screen. You have to do something to make 
the top image transparent in some way, right? So there's going to be a selection that you have where you're like, I want to use certain clips because they are more transparent than other clips. This is a really tough one to mess around with. You really got to play around with it a lot. Um, but I really find like 20 pixels is like the max. 10 is like perfect. You could do like 10 and 20 if you want three different layers. Um, but it's, it's, it's really, you got to play around with this one for sure. Okay, cool. All right. Um, shit, how am I going to do this? Um, okay. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please like come up right in front of me and like raise your hand, please. And thank you. Okay, cool. All right. Um, thank, thank, thank you for, for coming uh, to my TED. I'm just going to answer questions in person. That's, that's like a much better idea. Oh yeah, no, no, please, please, please lamp, bring it in, bring it in. Okay. Do you have a question? Okay. I can. Exactly. Okay. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lamp. Appreciate that. Um, so Lamp was asking about if there's like a sweet spot for convergence or distance away from the object, um, specifically within Touch Designer, um, like convergence Z is like a thing. Um, so I'm going to say no. The answer, the answer is no. And it, it's really, a, it's a relationship between the IPD, the, the distance between the cameras and the convergence, right? So you can actually sort of, you can get these really interesting effects. Um, you know, Bricaro, Bricaro was kind of doing this kind of stuff early on in the process where like if you put, if you put the eyes really far apart from each other, it makes everything feel like a toy, right? It makes things feel like sort of um, like mini mini miniature. Um, so I feel like, I feel like the answer to that is that yeah it, it definitely it definitely depends um on and it, it, it's a relationship between the ipd and the convergence to sort of to sort of sell the effect so it's it's, it's really something you have to play with yes thank you lamp appreciate that does anyone does anyone else have please like literally come right in front of me and put your hand up if you have another question okay oh please um just a second you can go ahead. Um, Perfect. Okay. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Thank you for the question. Okay. All right. So they were asking um, if, so a lot of clubs are right now are using portions of the screen for other data. Um, and so I actually, that was actually like one of the first UVs I did was this like crazy. I had like a segmented display, like a calculator. And I was all like, okay, cool. We're going to use, we're, do, we're doing a one, one screen. And then we're using all the leftover space below for the segmented display so that you can say your name so that everyone knows who's VJing. It's going to be so cool. Um, and that was like, like we, I was already asking so much of like, of the, of the VJs. Like I was asking so much of them at that point and, and to like put that, that UV in front of their space, their face with like literally like 200 different like little dots that you like, punch in for like little punch cards that was insane um so so the answer is like yes but unfortunately there's no way there's there's no way that i've i've learned how to separate out 
the um, the data the data that the, the, the that the 3D shader is seeing and the one that the rest of the materials are seeing. So what I had to do with that is I actually had that halved, right? So I was I was including like you know you might be using like DMX data below like below the screen, right? But in my experience, I had to half that. I had to use half that information. So, um, but the answer, the answer is yes. You you definitely have room below. You can you can make different aspect ratios. You can make like one one screens. You can have things stretched out more. Um, there's definitely room to play with. We had we had a bunch of UVs that we used for this. So beautiful. Do you do you do you have do you have a follow up here, Kyle? Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, that make that make that makes sense to me. Thanks for the context. They're, they're, they're just saying that there are ways to to use cameras to be able to see the whole thing. Uh, Lily, um, Lily, Lily has a question. Go ahead. I can I can hear you, Lily. Gotcha. Okay. So Lily's asking about filming. So okay, you know what? Here. So I just want to make I just want to make sure are you are you saying like filming so that you can see the 3D effect or just filming in 3D so you can show things in 3D? Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. So so Lily's asking about like edit like editing VRC lens footage in 3D about if you keep it separate or not. And you definitely do. Like you have to you have to keep things separate. Sorry. Um you have to keep things separate um in the left right scenario. You can still edit for like color, you can edit for um uh for brightness and stuff. But again, what I was talking about with, with VRC lens using that sort of parallel effect where it's kind of making your eyes do the convergence for you, that can, that can be really distracting, honestly. So you, you might, you might want to mess with the, the frames. You might want to kind of find a way to overlap them, but that would have to be for still footage. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do that for drone footage because the kind of focus when you're moving around with drones and club footage you know, you, you, you're really, you're going all over the place, right? So it's, um, it's, it, it, it's, it's tough to capture that. I really feel like one could modify VRC lens so that it has a convergence point so that the, the two cameras face in a little bit. I think, I think that would be a big step forward in, in terms of filming with filming in 3d, but right, right now, I think it's a little hard to look at if I'm honest. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Lily. Um, I'm going to take any other questions um, after. Feel free to come up to me. Um, but thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk and for the event. I, I, I appreciate that. The, the, event, the event is over. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to put on like a bunch of documentaries uh, after this, but like do not, do not stay here for that. That's like, that's like fine. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Okay. I love you. All right. Shout out, shout out Shaggy. Shout out Silent. Shout out Juno. Um, 
Shout out Gpot, shout out Scenic, shout out Ten. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you, VJs, for putting in so much work. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you, Friend Club. Thank you, Friend Club. Okay, all right, bye. All right, later. Chill.